All right, this, I'm Matt at Fretz RV. This is the Texa Outdoors Mantis. This is the 2020 model. This one here has the rear back door. This one does not have the equipped uh, awning on this one, but you can purchase that at a later date. We have our keys, our purple keys here are gonna be our door keys. So we have our door lock, which is this one. So you can lock the deadbolt and unlock it. And then you have another one, which does the door itself. One of these do that. So that locks this little handle here. You got window on the door. You have your entry door step at the bottom. This here you lift up slightly, pull out, and you have your entry door. You have your steel fenders, so you don't have to worry about hitting any brush or anything really damaging the unit. So this here will push away any brush that you're going off-roading with if you choose to do so. Also equipped, you do have your all-terrain style tires, so you don't have to worry about it getting stuck in the mud and such or sliding all over while you're towing it behind your vehicle. Uh, you do have four stabilizers, two front, two in the rear. On the back here, we do have a, a rack, so you can store your uh, luggage and stuff if you choose to. Also up top we do have the pop top. Now it's not recommended to walk on the top of this unit, but on the back we do have stairs to gain access to your luggage racks. On the sides you can see that at the lower sections we do have a red in the rear, yellow in the front. These are your marker lights. And then come around the back here we do have the rear hatch door like I was saying. Go ahead and open that. It gives you nice coverage back here. This here is your rear bed. Right now it's set up as such, but this does convert into a dinette, which I'll show you in a few moments. We got a license plate holder, which will hold your license once you purchase this. We have a rear tail lights left and right. Also in the center, it does have a backup indicator, so if you do are backing up, these will illuminate white. And we do have the steps. The steps does have a ladder handle on the left side. And I'm 220 pounds, and this easily holds my weight. Now it does bounce around a little bit, only due to it being a single axle, but this does give you plenty of access to reach and get to where you need to be. And Taxa was smart enough to put some rubber grip on this so that you don't hurt your hands when grabbing onto this. Now if we come around on this side then, oh, we have the same style fenders, but this here is the cover for our air conditioner. We have our 30 amp uh, shore power connection, so when you want to plug in to have 120 into the coach. We have our solar plug, this is for the so this one's the universal, so you have to look at your provider to provide an inline controller to control the solar panels that you choose to hook up to this unit to maximize your voltage. This here, little vent, this is your vent for your batteries. We have our fresh water, portable water fill here, which you can use a hose to fill up, or you can throw in the gallon jugs from the grocery store. Right here, this is where you have your connection for city water, so when you're at the campsite, some of them have city connections you can hook up to. This does have its own locking plug, so you don't have to worry about any bugs or anything getting in. So right here is where you hook up your garden hose from your faucet, and then you can have water into all your fixtures as your shower connection, your toilet, which is in here, that will be a separate water source, so it does not fill itself. That's a maintenance item that you have to take care of when you're out camping. Right here is your outside shower, so you have your hot and cold, and the quick connect. I'm going to grab the hose, and I'll show you how to install that. Alright, now that I have the hose here, this here you can take off and put your favorite style 
of hose end on it if you choose. So you can have your little sprayer, mister, or whatnot. You can also use this as an outside shower, which it does have uh, a little outside shower garden hose style that you can use for outside shower while you're holding it. Now this is your quick connect end here. Just simply just gets pushed in place. Once it's locked, you can turn on the cold to have cold water. Or turn on the hot, which gives you your hot water from your Truma water heater, which is a combi unit. So the combi unit also uses uh, is your furnace for your heat in your unit and also your hot water heater at the same time. To release, you just push down back this part here, like so, and you can release. Unless here's just another thumb lock. So I'm just gonna put this to the side for a moment. So this here is your Truma air intake, which is the outside edge here, and the exhaust, which is gonna be hot from this area here. Here's another vent for the wiring system probably, but we'll see what that's doing on the inside. Now down below here, in front of the driver's side tire, we have our gray water. This is our gray water valve. Just go ahead and let that go. That will drain any gray water that was in from the sink or from the shower. Now we have a drain in the inside here, so that's just gonna drain out. That's from testing the tanks to make sure that everything's operational and leak free. All right, now behind the driver's side tire, we have our gray knob that's all the way down here. Open this up, this will drain the fresh water out of your fresh tank. You can close it off and that closes it off. In this compartment here, we have our toilet. Oh, that's my keys. Here's your keys. So this key for this one is the 200R key. That's the key that's gonna unlock that. These here lift up and rotate, which undoes the latch. It is a little bit of a stiff door just so the wind doesn't catch it, and it only opens up a little past 90 degrees. So in here, we have our black tank. We have our water level here that we can visibly see. When we add our uh, fluid uh, black tank stuff, you can add it to here to have a blue line. We recommend putting that in the tank instead of in the filter part for the water because that can dye this clear uh, tube, leaving a film on the tube so it become harder and harder to see the level of the water. This tube here comes out. You can fill up the fresh water again for the toilet through this here. This is your black tank. To remove your black tank, there's a green tab here. You pull up and pull out. top you'll find this part here. This is for the fill. So you can take this out. Let's take this to your dumping station that you need. It does have a little handle. Pull out that. So you can cart it to your nearest dumping station. You don't need to carry it the whole way. Once you get to your dumping station, you can simply pull this open, remove this cap, Lift up and then dump it out. And then this here has the levels for the amount of tank so you can add your black tank additives of your choosing, whichever smell you like. That will keep the smell on the interior down. Now, as far as this part goes, we pull this out, undo this cap. This cap will sit right on here like so, and then you can fill up the water without it splashing back at you. Now, it will take a little bit to fill it up slightly above this green uh, connector so that it fills in. And then once it reaches the top of this gray level here, that's when you stop filling it, because then it's overfill. And you don't have to worry too much about getting a little bit of water in there as it will drain out the bottom. So I'll put that back. this back there. 
Now when you put this back in, make sure you put a sandal, push it in, so you push it down, pull it out, push it down and back in, then push this all the way in until the little lever locks in place. So when you pull on it, it doesn't come back out. Now, don't be too full he-man with it because you can pull it out as it's just plastic. Now, I recommend locking this so you don't have someone try trying to steal something they don't know anything about. And that will keep everything sanitary around the campsite. Now I'm gonna go over hooking up the shore power. So we have our short cord here. We have our yellow end and our black end. This is the plug that goes into the outlet. Now we're gonna initially hook up to the system here. This has a little L on it, so we're just matching them up, so matching the shapes. Once we match them, push it in and turn it slightly to the right. And then we line up this. Sometimes it takes a steady hand. There we go. And then you can lock this on at the campsite. So if someone was to trip on it, it doesn't pull it out of your unit, stopping all 120 into the coach. Now we take this hand here. I have an outlet right next to the setting here. And we just plug it into the matching outlet. And then you go ahead and turn on the breaker at your campsite. Now this is a 30 amp cord, meaning that you can run your air conditioner on it. If you get the 15 amp adapter, which looks like the regular house cord the, or extension cord, then you're going to have to not use the air conditioner or the microwave as they sometimes run up to 17 amps plus. You gotta consider that you have a charging system in the unit, which is pulling about five to eight amps of power and that over the limit of 15 amps. So now we're gonna to go to the front of the unit. Now at the front of the unit, we have our A-frame here. On our A-frame, we do have a brake controller that's standard equipment with the taxa units. We have a fob key. This fob key controls this. So the center button here activates the brakes consistently on it. Now we have a minus and a plus on this fob key. So if we feel that the unit is pushing us when we're hitting the brakes and we feel the unit kind of like jerking down the way when we're hitting the brakes, we're gonna push up on the brakes. And if we feel like someone's pulling us at the belt of our seat, we're gonna wanna reduce the brakes. You wanna have that happy medium. So. It could be different. You might need to up the brakes if you're traveling on highway speeds or lower the brakes if you're in inner city areas. <coughs> now on the front here, we also have our safety chains on the left and right. These have the data tags for the safety equipment, meaning of the chains installed. Um, you can pull these over and around. That reduces them, reduces the the clanginess of it, or you can simply remove them. Us as a dealership, not allowed to remove these until you gain possession of it. We have our seven-way plug-in. So if you do not have a adaptive connector for this, meaning you have a flat core on your vehicle, you will have to have a seven-way installed, either here at Frex or somewhere at your liking. Now this does have a holder <coughs> for the seven-way, so it doesn't drag or get corrosion. That's on this side here. <coughs> so we just line these up until these can hold each other. Now this is a two-inch ball that's on this unit. So when you hook up underneath of it, lift up, lift forward until it locks.
All right, this is a two inch ball. And to lock it on place, we're gonna throw a head lift off and lock it in place until these feet on the bottom here are in these two holes. That means that we have a good connection on the two inch ball that is in there. Then we're gonna go ahead and cross our chain. Now this is an optional wheel. This is an optional wheel that you can put on the bottom of the tongue jack here, which is a manual crank. Right to go up, left to bring down the front end of the unit. Uh, there you have this pin that you can line up the holes, put the pin through on both sides, and lock it in place. Then you can easily turn around in a driveway. Just be mindful of the pitch of the driveway as you can have a rolling away object that's not fun to catch. So back to the chains here. You want to take your chains, straighten them out, left over right, right over left, and then hook them to your vehicle. You had already hooked up to here and locked on the, the tongue, so we go ahead and put the safety lock through. Like so. That's ensuring that this does not come and locked in transit. And then we have our breakaway cable. You can throw this through here, but it needs to be unobstructed and you'll have a quick D-link or quick chain link that you can use to hook separate than your hooks. Never run these through the chain links and never just latch this on here and hook through here. The reason that these are equipped on your trailer is the last line of defense for any family or anyone driving on the highway. If a catastrophic failure of your hitching equipment was to fail or these chains were to snap. This here will pull out the end of the brake controller here and this will constantly throw voltage from the battery that's equipped to the brakes stopping the vehicle. Now on the front here we have two 20 pound tanks these here are the covers locked in place with a bungee cord. And then we're going to go ahead and turn these on. So to open them, we're going to spin these to the left and these close to the right. I'll take this off so you can see the regulator. So you have your optional left and right tank. So you can see that it says supply on the top of this. So if this tank was to go empty, you can switch this over to this tank and that will run off of that one. And then you can go and take this one off and go have this filled by your uh, regional propane distribution area. So like meaning Fred's RV or you could have these swapped out at like Home Depot's, Lowe's and uh, so on. Now this here is your uh, leveling, well, your stabilization jack tool. This has little cuts in it. You want to line these cuts up with the, with the pump outs on the end of this rod. So, so we're going to turn these to the right to bring these down. And just until they're slightly tight is when you want to stop. You're not going to use these to level it left and right. To level it left and right, you want to find a block of wood and put it underneath the tire and pull the camper over it. And that will level it left and right if it's slightly unlevel. So I'm going to go ahead and put all these down and then we're going to go over the interior. And 
and uh, previous to everything, I've already leveled the nose front to back. So that's honestly where you want to start. You want to level the unit front to back, and then you can level it side to side. And then you can put down your stabilizers, and that will stop most of the heavy shifting when moving in the coach. All right. At your front entry door here, also, you do have a 12-volt cigarette-style outlet. So when you have your battery on, you can definitely use this for any accessory you choose. Now, on the end of the door here, these two components lock into each other. So these two components here is what your door's going to be equipped on to. Yeah, I can't talk today for some reason. And just push firmly in place. That will hold that on there. Now, on the inside of the door here, you do have a nice praying mantis engraved into the supports. Now, this unit has a full exoskeleton. So that is the outside here. And then this is the interior skeleton. Uh, everything is pop riveted on this whole unit. Uh, we do have the entry door window. So when you're inside, you can open up your window. And it's the same with the other ones, which I'll go over in more detail. But you do have your bug screen when you have it open slightly. And then you have your nighttime screen. Now to unpair these two, just lift up on this little gray piece here, and then you can push it up and down as you please. You just stay wherever you'd like. Uh, throughout the whole system here, you'll find that these have little holes throughout it. These are mainly for carabiner clips, so let me have my keys here. You can go ahead and put keys on it, or whatever you'd like, water bottles, whatever you can tie anything to, especially if you're good with knots. Me, myself, I'm an Eagle Scout, so I'm fairly versed in knots. Uh, I'm going to have my camera lady set up inside so you can show, I can show you how to open up the top of this, and then we'll go over the interior space. All right, so on the left hand side here, I'm going to turn on some lights. We'll go over that in just a moment. So now I got some lights on, you can see what I'm doing. On both right and left side, we do have these red handles. These are your roof locks. There is a little uh, tab that we're gonna push in. And then lift up. I'm just gonna bring this down. Do the same on the opposite side. Now that that's done. Go ahead and push this up. Now we're fully extended. Now this has the new design top, which is very nice. So there's no more little braces and things to push up, which is a plus. This here is your handle to bring everything back down if you'd like. So now I brought it up, I'm gonna bring it back down and then you'll, we'll return back to the interior, just so you can get an idea. Now, these are pretty heavy when you're pulling it down, since they're supposed to take a lot of wind and weight. So I'm gonna bring it down, hold it a little bit, compress it some. I'm gonna grab the sides, bring the sides in. Bring it down some more. And then it locks in place. Kind of like settles. So I'm going to take this fabric, pull it taut, roll it up. Make sure this cover is over top of the fabric so that no potential damage is pinched to it. Go ahead and push this in. Firmly push down. Sometimes you might have to move this a little to the right. So it latches properly. And then you do the same on the driver's side. And then we're ready to travel again. So I'm gonna put this back up and then I'll be right back. All right, so everything in this unit is bungee cord friendly. I'm going to turn on the air conditioner. The air conditioner is right to the stove on, at the main area. So it's just like a regular house style. I'll turn down the temperature. I'm going to turn up the fan speed. 
Now I'm turning it to cool with the mode and you can do all the same controls here on this as well. So everything uses a bungee cord in this unit. We have our crates, which we use for storage, or turn it upside down, use it as a seat anywhere you'd like. And then the bungee cords pass through and the end goes into the little circle section. And that goes throughout the whole coach. Can you stop for a sec? Yep. All right, so it's the same bungee cords throughout the whole unit. We have some goodies here. This is that outside shower that I was talking about that you can use on that same blue hose for the outside. This black, black box carries the extra accessories for the full uh, white rack that is installed on the back of the coach on the roof. This is your EcoSmart uh, toilet additive. I'd read all the instructions on this so you can use it properly because each product is slightly different. So whatever I tell you could be potentially wrong. This is all the manufacturer uh, manuals. So for your air conditioner, this is your taxa unit one. So you can go over everything with this and register your unit. We have our fed for cassette toilet, which you should read over so you can properly use it and not damage it. We have our Truma cooler, which is on the passenger side, which we'll go over a little bit. Uh, this is the bag for the screen door, which is in another uh, container. This one doesn't have nothing. And this one here. This is your screen door. So they installed it your screen door. You find which side the zipper's on. The zipper goes to the bottom, which is down here. Now this has Velcro all the way around it. And there's Velcro on the inside parts of the door. So it takes a little practice, but once you find the sweet spot where it's supposed to be, you'll have no problem setting it up quick and easy. Now there is Velcro at the bottom as well. So when you're done moving about the cabin for the night and you just want the door open and have some fresh air, but you want to keep the bugs out, you can go ahead and Velcro the bottom. Awesome thing about Velcro is it works as an alarm system also at night, so if you hear something on Velcroing, you definitely know something or someone is trying to access your coach. So you do have the zipper. This does have a little loop on it, and there's a toggle on the other side, so it's loop and toggle, you just pull this forward, plug the loop around and that will hold the doors open if you have them on. Uh, above me here is you do have this bed here. So on the table here, uh, these are here. On the table we have our first switch. This does the outside awning light. This one does the red night light. This one here does the main lights. And this one here does the front bunks or front couch. And then this is the fuse for your air conditioner. You have two outlets here, a USB outlet and a regular style car outlet. And all these little knobs next to it are the bus fuses for the unit. Now, this is your bunk setup area. We have a strap on this here. 
this strap is used to hold this up if you're trying to have a light or some such. We have hook holes up top here. So I go ahead and lift this up. I can strap that on there. And then I can go ahead and put my bike here. We do have pockets on the left and the right side. And then for the bunk cell, I'm going to lift up the backer here. I have a hook on the left and a hook on the right. And then you can have your bunk set up. So these are more towards smaller and young adults, not someone heavy as myself. And there's also a little light in the corner as well, which has its own switch. So you can leave this up here and you can use this as regular storage. You can take off these cushions. They're just velcroed on. We do have little pockets under here so you can put more stored goods under here. The hammock style system. Over here we have our shower and our countertop. So you can lift this up. There is a little tab here that you bring down. That prevents this from closing on you when you're using the toilet or the shower. Now you do have a little pocket here. Now normally that's where you can store this. This is our shower surround. So you can store this in this little pocket here. So you can use the box as a different type of uh, source. We have our shower hose. So you can take your shower you don't have to hold it up to do so. So to assemble our shower surround, let's find where we are. So there is a short little section, I believe. Nope. So this one here, we have our little holes here these toggles all the way around. And then we have our little latch buttons. Got one. Two. Three. Four. So you can about for this up. Take your shower, go about your business, soap up. This is uh, a little coarse, so don't try to spray the sprayer right on it, but it will deflect most of it all the way down. And the biggest thing with this floor is you don't need to worry about too much with dust or wetness, just sweep it out the door. Remember to take this and fold it up. And then you can stick that right on in here. And this does have a Velcro backside here. This Velcro backside gets Velcroed onto this unit as well. 
Now you have your commode. So if you use this, you gotta make sure you have your battery disconnect on. You hold this blue button. So obviously if you're going number two, you wanna fill the bowl like such. And then once you're done your business, go ahead, pull it back and flush. I recommend filling this up slightly, just enough to cover the little black uh, valve there. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. So you want to cover the little black valve there, and then uh, just leave that there when you're camping. But once you're ready to go down the road, just open it and let it drain out. Uh, the, so this is the only s section that goes into that tank. All the other rest, rest of the drains go into that gray tank that I showed you. Put this back. So right here we have our Dometic sink. Our Dometic sink has a little stopper. We have our Dometic stove top. To light this stove top, make sure you have your propane on. Push this in to light and push down on the silver button. Hold this down for a little bit until it's lit. There you are. Now we have nice two burners. I'm kind of jealous. I want this for my sailboat. Uh, make sure you don't put this glass down after you've been cooking for a while. Let this whole surface become cool to the touch before closing this. Be gentle when closing that as well. You don't want to slam that top down. Uh, everything in this unit is uh, prefab, so you have your uh, shelves and everything in here, which is nice. You have your GFI, which tells you if it's tripped. You have your voltage meter for your batteries. Also, you have another outlet here. You have storage, 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 storage. Uh, this one here is where your Truma system is located. Then here you have your 120. Cut my fingernails, I can't get it. Give it a little tap, give it a little love, it'll come open. So here we have our 120 section. So this is where all your breakers are. And then on the bottom row, this is where your 12 volt fuses are for the rest of your systems. They're labeled inside this box here, AC for your AC ones, and then DC for your DC fuses. Underneath this panel here is where your battery is located. We have our other light fuse uh, switches right here, and our water pump switch. We have our Truma control, which I'll go over in a minute. So hopefully we've got some water left in the fresh tank. There we are. And we have our hot side and our cold side. So the hot side, after being used, needs to be bled slightly. I'm not sure that. All right, so we have our cold side running off of our pump here with it opening this outward down. Then pull it up for hot, which will get you hot. Now, right now we're on the water pump. So you, once you use the hot, the pump will stop running after it builds pressure. Now, while it's building pressure, it can take the lights and kind of flash them slightly as it's taking voltage to that. Now, this little red light on here is indicating that the water pump is on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that off. These little cutouts here are so you can take trash bags and use them as a garbage bag I don't have one, but I do have a funny cord that I can use as a demonstration. So this here, if this is the trash bag handle, I'll just go ahead and put it like so. 
and that there will be holding uh, your trash bag or your bag. Or if you have a backpack, you can even put your backpack there. Now this is our Truma refrigerator. Now there's multiple uh, companies that make these style ref refrigerators. Uh, this is like a refrigerator cooler system. So this is like the refill, the uh, uh, retake. So this is our tr Truma uh, refrigerator. This is the cooler chest style. So you have multiple uh, makers of this. You have Dometic, you have ARB, you have Truma and off brands as well. Uh, this is one of the larger capacity ones. So you have your freezer is closer to the bottom or closer to the pulling pad and your refrigerator is up a little bit larger. You do have a little piece that you can bring up and down so you can leave your fridge items up top and then put your freezer items down below. This one has the controls right here. So we have two styles. So you can use your 12 volt if you choose or your 120. The 12 volt outlet. It's next to the well, 120. Yeah. All right, here, pause that for a minute. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Is it going? Yep. Oh, okay. So this is our 120. I've just plugged in our 12 volt. Our 12 volt has an outlet that is back in the corner over here. This is the cigarette style outlet. So all you gotta do is just plug that in. Once you plug this in, make sure you don't plug both of them in at the same time as you can damage the unit. You can only use one at, the time, one at a time. So we have our settings here. We have our off and on. Holding the on and off button, turns it on, pushing it on, it just one push, hold it, turn it off. This here changes turbo to regular, so Turbo uses more of a power consumption. You have your E2, so you can change Celsius, low, uh, normal and high. So low is low voltage. So this will shut off probably at 11.8, depending on uh, if they're keeping the same voltage style as a uh, Dometic. Uh, I'll definitely read up on this a little bit more. You can change the temperature of the fridge. You can change the Fahrenheit to Celsius. So right now we're at 40 degrees. I'm gonna put it at 38. So when you have something closer to the cooling unit, it will get colder. So it's possible that it can freeze or be frozen, but something higher in the fridge tends to stay a little bit warmer. So keep that in mind on how you're gonna pack your unit. Now this is your rear bed. It's fairly large. We have our rear windows and both sides. We have our center windows. These here, you just lift up the handles on the bottom, lift up the side ones. And then you can bring it outward, find the location you want to hold it at, and then tighten these knobs. And that will fold the window open how you'd like. And then you can put your bug screen up so you don't have all the nice little mats in here. And then when it's time to sleep, you can loosen your knobs. Let it come closed. Now there is a vent mode, which holds this in the center of that window piece, which will allow fresh air in. Let's say if it's raining, uh -huh. just keep an eye out on updraft. So if it's really blowing, you might want to close these all the way, like so. I'll give you a good closed window so it doesn't leak. And then you can bring down the nightshade all the way around and then you're good to go.
Um, all right, so these do have little clips on them and holders. These are so you can hold these up and clip them in place. So you have ample storage. Now these two are filler seats. So these filler seats can actually go on this side. I'll put this one over here. This here is going to be your dinette table. This has the little end on it that will have the rod on it. That goes in the center here. I'll bring this down for a minute. Now the rod is on this one here. This is all the way on the driver's side. You do have another little area back here that you can get to. Have this cushion here. And then this has this little twist end. This twist end goes in the table surround. Twist that in and it will lock in place. There's a little black knob on the opposite side. I'm gonna go ahead and step on that. And then you can unlock it. So now it's locked in place, like so, it won't unlock. You go ahead and take this and place it like that. Put down this seat. Take that little filler. We can either A, take this out, if you're gonna have more companies side by side and you need a little crossover, or we can place that back down, put this down, and now we have seating all the way around. So you can have ample company over while eating. You can even turn it like such. So I could easily just slide her around. I have my own company while showing a unit. Uh, we do have this little hanger part here. So you can use this in conjunction with the roof to help bring it down with two hands. Uh, this door here, you can close this from the inside like so. Open this up, tighten the handles. And now you have a nice little pass through without having this hole open and then put up the bug screen so you don't have the bugs while you're eating. Or if you're trying to pass things through while you have a person inside, it opens up as easy with one hand, which is a very nice convenience of this unit. Now, if you want to, you can even back up to a nice spot that you can have a nice view, put your legs out, and just have a good old time. And it is a little bit of a jump to get out of it. Not that high, not that low. Not at all. I kind of exaggerated that jump. So if you have little sub legs, it might be a little bit of a jump for you. Oh, I did notice that there is another outlet in that corner compartment right there. You have another little 12 volt outlet. And I'll be right back. Go ahead. So on the bottom here, on the end of the table, there is a little knob that you have to depress. This one right here. And then you depress it, then you can lift up on that. This here locks it on place. So if you have someone grabbing the table, don't lift it up. So you don't have to worry about it bouncing up. And go ahead and depress that. Now the other thing is these little cutouts here are so you can put them in these little bump stops here so that it doesn't move around in transit, which is a very nice option as the tra traditional style of RV would just have this cleat here and then the table could slide out and in, which is awesome. 
has a very good design from tax. So, so this here, again, goes underneath this long cushion, underneath this piece here. Clips the back, put it away, and forget about it. So then you can lift this up again, grab the seat bed extension, Table. I'd say you tend to leave the little cutout in the center, so if from the outside if you need to grab something underneath here, you can just simply lift up on this. That makes it a little bit easier than trying to squeeze your fingers in between this or lifting up on this to grab it from the side. This here goes here. There. Um, all the way in the back here, we do have a little grab handle. So if you need help to get up, you got it. As me, my ankles kill me in the morning. So that's an awesome feature included. Now we're going to go over the True Mode water heater and furnace. So that is on this panel here, right, right underneath your Dometic sink. So this here is your back button. This is your selector dial and to select something, you're going to push in on this dial. Pushing in the first time is going to give you up to your menu screen. Right now the RV is flashing. Being that it's flashing is where you're at. So I'm going to turn it over. I'm on the water heater. I'm on the fan control. I'm on a timer. I'm on the clock. So you can set the clock to whatever time you want. There you go. And then we have our offset. This is the offset between the temperature. So if you want to dial in your thermostat a little bit better than an area, so you can be exact on the point, if you're one of those type of people, you can uh, set it uh, plus or minus degrees. Sorry, just minus degrees. We have our temperature, so you got Fahrenheit and Celsius. We have our brightness, so you can change the brightness of the home screen. I'll keep it at seven. We got our hours, 24 or 12. We have our language. If you speak Dutch, Italian, or French, you can change it to those. And we're index gives us our version of our heater and our uh, system. And then reset. Reset sets everything back to factory. So this one here is flashing. This, I've moved over to the little house. I'm going to select that. Right now it's off. I'm going to set up the temperature of the house that I want. So when it's super cold, put it at a high temperature. Once it reaches hot enough for you, I'd recommend pushing in again. Bring it down to the set temperature you'd like to be at. Push in again, selects it. Seeing that this little flame here is on, that's going to indicate that it is operational. Now that that's all running, we can start to run our water heater as well. You don't necessarily need that on to run your water heater, like in the summertime. So right now it's still off position. I'm gonna click it on. We have Eco, which is only gonna heat the water when we put the hot water on and it sees demand of flow. And then we have hot, and then we have boost. Uh, me, I love hot showers, so I'd need it on boost. Then we have our fan control, so we have Eco and high. That's going to not be like a conventional RV, as it's more of a quiet fan. Now, if you look at the bottom of there, you have that round hole. That is where all your heat's gonna come out of. Around the coach, you'll see them sitting. So that's where all your primary heat's gonna be. So that there is gonna push on the back of the door there, keeping the cold out, which is nice. We have one that's behind me, and then that's pretty much the location. Oh, we got one here, and we have one here, and then one over there. That's where all the heat's going to come from for our coach. So we pick our temperature. Our 
house. Now I'm going to turn this off so you can hear how loud the furnace and water heater are. And that's normal. Hearing a little bit of water sound, what it does is it takes the uh, the fan here on the back of the condenser and actually picks up some water that's in it and cools the uh, compressor so that sounds normal. Now right now the furnace is on and you probably can barely even hear it or hear it at all but it's running. Now it's not going to be like a big flow that's coming through. Uh, there is little valves in here that you can open to have a lot or close to close them off to have a little. But it's more of a passive style of flow that's coming in. Now, if you're not going to be using the furnace, I do recommend closing these so that you can keep uh, pet hair out and uh, bugs because eventually you're going to get a bug in here. It happens. It's RVs. You're out camping. You're in the woods. You're in their environment. Um, now the battery disconnect is in this compartment here. I've been talking about it throughout the demo. So down here, this little red knob is our battery disconnect. When we turn it to the left, we can actually turn it a little bit more to take this out. This dis disconnects the battery from the circuit, turning off all power to the coach. Then I can turn it and turn it all the way to the right. So it's off and then it's on to the right. And then that brings power back to the coach. Right now, nothing went off because we're plugged into 120. So everything was running off the inverter. Also, this little black knob by the Trupa system is your thermostat. So if you have this covered or you have something warm to it for a long time, that will turn off the furnace if it's cold out and you're not getting enough heat. Uh, the other thing, last thing probably to talk about is your tent care and your uh, safety equipment. So you have your LP and CO2 detector. That is this one right here. If you hear this beeping and going off, it has a little red flashing light. That means you need to take care of something. Like so, it's a super loud beep. Sorry about the headphones if headphone warning. And then on the top of the roof, we have our smoke alarm or my clucking alarm, which is right here. This here takes a nine volt battery. So make sure you test it each trip by pushing in on this. Uh, your windows are all zipper style with a screen. So make sure that you close these all the way before closing it. Now you do have toggles that you can use to roll this up when you have these windows open. You can open up all four windows to have nice breeze through. Uh, this whole unit does have Velcro holding it together. Also on the safety equipment, we have our fire extinguisher here that has a dial. Once it gets into the red, you want to look into replacing this. Um, now back to this part here, uh, like all the corners and everything are Velcro. So a whole tent you can actually remove and dry wash. Uh, I'd follow Tax's uh, recommendations for cleaning the fabric. Uh, and then you want to keep in mind when you're putting it all back together to try to keep everything flat and then push it on and make sure that all your corners are all good and solid when putting them on so you have no leaks on the interior. Um, and also keep an eye out on all your roof sealants as well. Any gap can cause a leak into the unit. So just keep a mindful eye when you're in the unit and going around the unit. Uh, I think I pretty much covered everything I can see and think about. Uh, as far as dumping the unit, you want to dump it in a dumping facility, but it's gray water. So you technically can dump that anywhere where you can dump regular wastewater. 
like a campground or even at the home. Um, you can fill up a bucket, throw it down the toilet, it's up to you. Uh, the black tank, you need to go to a dump station or a toilet and you can dump that straight into there and flush it. Um, make sure you use RV style toilet paper that there will help prevent a buildup, kind of like paper mache. Uh, I'd even recommend doing like maybe two, three, two flushes into two full bowl flushes into that and that will stop the solids from solidifying on the bottom and building all the way up. And so you'll keep having more storage space in there for when you're camp camping. Uh, also remember to close this before going in transit as this can bang around in transit. So you wanna make sure that's lowered. Uh, you wanna make sure that everything else is secure when moving to pre prevent any scratches and anything going on. So you wanna make sure you take your bungee cords push them through, throw this little end through like such. I believe the other one's next to you. Now, being that this here is in the way of that one, you can turn it around and there's one above it as well. And then the next step for us here today, would to be make sure our refrigerator is secure, all the components inside of it are secure, uh, that we've turned off all of our lights, closed our fabric, locked the top in place as you don't want it to pop open in transit, and then lift up your stabilizer jacks. That's a big key. I've already replaced two customers, so don't forget to do that. And this completes our 2020 uh, demo of the Mantis, Taxomantis, sorry. Okay. Now that we're done using all of our heat and our water heater, we can turn these by selecting it again, roll the temperature all the way to off, push in to turn it off, and then select again, turn that to off, that will turn it off, and now we're good push back and now we're good there's no longer any anything running there we go now I have nothing up top indicating that nothing is running so now we're ready to just turn off all of our lights and go about closing everything up to go a better way <laughs> 